Now, I'm very pleased to introduce distinguished Professor Christopher Barnakovlik, our Senior Deputy Vice-Chancellor and Vice-President of Research at QUT, who will open the conference. Distinguished Professor ARC Laureate Fellow Christopher Barnakovlik is a leading researcher in the field of macromolecular photochemistry. He has pioneered a wide array of precision photochemical transformations using multiple colors of light and is a pioneer of understanding photochemical reactivity via so-called action plots. He heads the research team at Queensland University of Technology, or QUT, and the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, KIT, in addition to his role as Senior Deputy Vice-Chancellor and Vice President Research at QUT. So welcome, Christopher. Thank you very, very much, um, everybody. Thank you very much, um, Stephanie and the entire organizing committee um, for putting on um, this fantastic event and for inviting me um, to share some of my thoughts um, on, on research assessment and what that might look like and how um, we together as a community can, can come together um, to make research uh, accessible, successful, and uh, delivering for, for all of us, not only in Australia, but, but worldwide. I would also like to acknowledge the traditional owners um, of the lands on which QUT stands, the um, Yagra and Torrebal people, and acknowledge their contributions that Torres Strait Islander and First Nations um, people make to the vibrant QUT community and across communities, and specifically in this case, research communities um, across Australia. So as Stephanie has alluded to, um, I'm Vice President of Research here at QUT, and in that capacity, um, I oversee QUT's research activities. But at the same time, I'm heading a, a research team um, here in, in Australia and, and in Germany with about 30 people made up of PhD students and, and postdoctoral researchers. So on a very daily level, uh, we are confronted um, at QUT with how do we assess uh, research excellence? Um, how should we count that? Is it countable? Um, that's sort of on an institutional level, but then also on a, on a more individual level in, the, in, in my research team, we, we confront that question every day, especially in the development of young and emerging uh, researchers such as DECRA fellows or senior postdoctoral fellows or, or young lecturers um, uh, that, that are trying to build um, their career nationally and, and internationally. And of course, we've we've entered um, in Australia at least a, a post-era world, and perhaps we um, can all agree that that era was a tool of its time, and it's probably um, done its its job in its very numeric, uh, numerically driven approach to to research assessment. And in in, in parallel, um, of course, we all know about the initiatives such as DORA. Um, which advocate a more considered approach uh, to research assessment and um, how we may measure uh, impact. So when I think about um, metricizing um, research, um, the immediate thoughts that, that come up um, are uh, immediately, and this is more of a personal reflection, that it is quite dangerous uh, to do so. Because of course, there are, there are multiple um, examples where uh, the immediate impact of research is, is not very clear, whether that's in the social sciences and engineering or the natural sciences. Um, research um, and its impact often becomes only evident after decades. Um, but unfortunately, we appear to be in an environment, and that's not only an Australian, um, an Australian phenomenon, I, maybe to a stronger extent an Australian phenomenon, but it extends uh, to, to jurisdictions worldwide, and, and I've, I'm receiving reports and conversations with my colleagues um, in Europe, in the UK, um, and in the US, that, that there is a growing trend that has been, perhaps over the last decade, on behalf of governments, to wishing to see the impact that research has um, more immediately um, than, than long term. And um, I think we as a community uh, do well um, if we reflect on how we invest in research and, and what we, we actually count, because there is grave danger 
in wanting to see the outcomes of research immediately and um, even at the funding stage require information as to, for example, how many jobs a piece of research uh, will create. Well, these are allowable questions, evidently. Um, they most of the time don't um, get or acknowledge the long-term nature that, that, that research um, has to offer. And governments around the world, but specifically in our jurisdiction, Australia, um, should carefully consider uh, whether long-term investment um, into research programs is, is worthwhile. And I would be advocating it is very worthwhile. And then um, that also means that the outcomes out of research should be purely judged on the quality of that research which is conducted, which ultimately can only be assessed um, by experts um, in the field. Um, that doesn't mean that researchers have, have, don't have an obligation to explain their research to the taxpayer and public who funds it. They absolutely do. Um, but at the same time, um, the, the outcomes of, of that research um, might only be impacting society in 20 or 30 or sometimes even, even 50 years. The other thing we, we tend to forget um, in Australia sometimes is that um, we talk a lot about the national interest and, and that's all very well, but quite often um, the national interest is aligned with what is good for, for human beings everywhere and for humanity everywhere. And certainly um, in, in all research, whether it's in the, in the humanities or whether it's in the, in the natural sciences or the social sciences, um, the mission of a researcher's work is for all humanity and not necessarily for a specific country. And if you, um, in your communities, I'm sure you all engage with researchers every day, and you will feel that because um, researchers that don't so much identify with a specific country, they will or nationality that they're truly cross border, um, cross national, and um, they feel that allegiance to their field and to the outcomes they can achieve for humanity um, much more than they feel that to that country to a country. So, in summary. Um, we as a community of research supporters and alongside the, the active researchers um, have to build a culture where we look um, foremost at the quality piece um, that's contained uh, within a research piece, the long-term trajectory that research um, piece has. Um, and at the same time, we're all under an obligation to, in conversations with policymakers and governments, uh, bring back a little bit of what's been lost. And what's been lost is that long-term focus on, on research um, and that we, we cannot, in many cases, expect research, um, even high quality or especially high quality research to have impacts that generates economic benefit immediately. This is a long-term game. And um, I think we would be well served uh, to communicate that. And sometimes our sector maybe hasn't been the best at that. So um, communication is a two-way process. Um, the arguments that we need to articulate maybe haven't been articulated in, in that way. So these are just some thoughts from, from, from my side and I, I would have loved, of course, to, to discuss with you. That's impossible in the shortness of the time here, um, but I, I hope it's, it's set the scene a little bit for you in the discussion that you're going to have forward um, over the next days. And thank you once again um, for putting on this wonderful event and um, for um, listening to me for a few minutes. Thank you so much, Stephanie and the entire team.